Oh, gosh. I love this question. I could lecture for hours on this question. I'm not going to. I'm not going you, you Guess what's coming. <laughs> you have no idea. <clears throat> what must the trans... It has nothing to do with anything we've talked about today, or for weeks even. But I use... I'm going to find a connection. Okay, cool. I'm looking forward to it. What must the transition have been like as we moved from oviparity to viviparity? Did shells get soft and become placentas? Were there many stillbirths along the way? How much can we extrapolate about the mechanisms? I actually thought at one point relatively late in the game at Evergreen that um, I wanted to start a research program in the various um, reproductive transitions, including oviparity, viviparity, and wait for it, ovoviviparity. Um, so I have I have hours of material that I could yammer on about this about, but um, I will say simply because we just don't have you need, the, you need to define the terms. Okay, so I, I yes, I will say simply what these three terms mean, and uh, and mostly leave it at that for now. Um, oviparity, um, ovo egg parity mode of birth. Um, you lay eggs um, as the way that you um, bring forth new life into the world if you are female. Uh, viva parity, viva live, parity again, mode of, uh, mode of birth. So um, we mammals, um, other than the monotremes, which are the echidnas and the duckbilled platypus, are viviparous. Uh, we give live birth. And then ovoviviparity, um, egg live birth, what the hell is that, um, is in fact an intermediate stage and persists in many squamates, that is um, snakes and lizards. And indeed, um, in some parts of the range of some snakes, you have um, some that are one and some that are the other. And it's an environmental response to the values and virtues of either having your kid on you and being weighted down with it as you are out foraging or being able to leave it behind having um, you know left it in an egg somewhere um, but risking it therefore being discovered by something that wants to eat it um, and of course um, there are you know additional advantages once you know if you are oviparous once that shell closes uh, you cannot as the mother uh, provide any more direct nutrients until it hatches it is what it is and it's going to you know you can protect it you can heat it you can cool it within reason, um, but you don't have any ability to control um, the nutrient load. You know, whatever um, yolk, for instance, um, in an amniote um, was inside that shell at the point that the shell got laid down is what it's got. Viviparity at the other end, specifically placental mammals being one of the three groups of mammals of which we are we are some, um, allows for the, the greatest amount of um, changes in parental, specifically maternal, um, giving of nutrients to the offspring. And of course, actually paternal influence can, um, can make a difference through genomic imprinting, which is its own thing, like genes that came from dad are more likely to try to draw nutrients from mom into the fetus and genes that come from mom. Um, alleles that come from mom are more likely to um, restrict the the fast flow of nutrients from mom to to fetus, so that um, so that mom has a greater chance of actually going on to produce more. That's one of many asides that we could go to. Ovoviviparity uh, is this intermediate stage, which not all organisms that have transitioned have presumably gone through, but maybe, in which you actually retain eggs inside your body, and so you have an egg. Um, which means that there is no direct transfer between mother and embryo once you have the egg, um, but you have the advantage of carrying carrying your babies with you wherever you go. So if you are in an environment, for instance, in which predation, especially predation of babies, um, is particularly high, there will be a benefit to you of oviviparity over either potentially oviparity or viviparity. Right. I could clearly go on and on, but I'll stop there. Which I think is the answer to the question that the transition will have to have, I mean, theoretically speaking, I would argue that maybe there's an exception, mm -hmm. but that in general, the uh, oviparous creatures will have gone oviviviparous before they go viviparous. I hope I'm using the terms right. But yeah. the basic point being, there's a good reason to retain, If even if you're an egg layer, there are lots of good reasons to retain eggs just the same way that in marsupials, a, uh, a kangaroo will produce a joey and then put the joey in the pouch. And the point is all of these things are variations on the same theme, which is 
there's a vulnerability to an offspring left behind. There is a cost to carrying an offspring with you. The various ecological and other considerations will the, the num- shift these things. The number of ways that mammals um, do this is actually extraordinary. So just you know, put aside the the monotremes, the <clears throat> the egg laying mammals at the moment. But um, you know, like marsupials can have three dependent kids at a time. Yep. Um, they can have you know a, a, a very early embryo still. In in utero, uh, a very young Joey that has been birthed but is tiny and basically you know is the size of like less than a peanut that came out is now in the pouch at at the teat and you know completely attached and then a Joey who's still um, nursing um, but is you know more or less independent three very differently aged but still fully dependent kids at a yep. time and you know there's lots of um, kinds of diapause and other you know reproductive you know ways that mammals can control that the female mammals can control their own reproduction. Um, and I realized that I forgot to explain the final part of oviviparity, which is that those eggs inside the body of an oviviparous organism, often a snake, um, well, a they're soft shelled, so it's not hard calcified shells like we think of with um, with birds, um, but they hatch just before they're born, and so you know they they live as eggs inside the mother, and then they hatch and are born right away. So I'm going to guess that actually there's an oviviparous stage, and then. Prior to the evolution of viviparous uh, birth, you will have the elimination of the shell, mm-hmm. and that this will then set the stage for um, for the transition. Yeah. 